Howdy everyone, this is Kurt Krenwalgi here at the beginning of the podcast again. I promise this isn't another uh, inexplicable ad, but just kind of a preface to this episode. Uh, so this episode was recorded on Friday, uh, the 29th of March, 2024, live at FateCon 2024. If you go over to our YouTube channel, uh, I did something special and I recorded video for this particular episode. So if you want to like see my face, uh, see the face match the voice, uh, you can go to our YouTube channel uh, to check that out and see it. Um, I'm going to do minimal editing with this episode. I've kind of uh, put the editing off on this one. Um, and I just wanted to kind of give that explanation up here at the top at the front of the episode just to explain like, hey, why are there these huge gaps and in, in, uh, sound and stuff like that? It's because I'm uh, I, I'm at the live at the convention uh, and I had two very gracious audience members, MK and Temp. Uh, and then there was another young man uh, who kind of like wandered in partway in, uh, but didn't necessarily fully participate, which is OK. Um, so. You know, I believe in being uh, honest and upfront. And so, yeah, I guess it was a, you know, it was a first local con for the five state fights. And, uh, you know, kudos and congratulations to them. Uh, you know, it was a great experience. It was fun. It was also Easter weekend. So I had family in town. So uh, there's just a lot going on that weekend. And, uh, you know, I was hoping uh, that perhaps on a Friday night, people would be more excited to go to a live podcast recording episode. But, you know, uh, you just have to roll with the punches, uh, as I said in the recording, you know, uh, whether it's an audience of two or 200 or no one as someone who got their undergraduate in music and spent a lot of time, uh, playing in my own little pop punk band in high school and stuff like that. Uh, you know, sometimes the only audience you have is your friends, uh, the, the few people there, uh, your parents, uh, you know what, but you do it for the love of the game. You do it for the love of the show. You do it for the love of your friends and your supporters. And, you know, it shouldn't bother me, uh, you know, that I had a small audience, uh, you know, but I, I, I believe in being real and transparent. And so, yeah, maybe it did a little bit, um, but it's not, a, it's not the fault of anyone uh, for not coming to the live recording. And I just wanted to own up to that, or I just wanted to speak that and uh, just let you know that it's okay. Uh, and whatever you're doing in life, right, whatever you're doing right now, um, whether you think anyone's watching you, someone is, uh, whether you think you're being given notice or recognition, someone is noticing and they are recognizing it. And I just want to speak this now out loud to you, out loud to me. And I just want to encourage you to keep going, to keep doing and to keep trying. Anyway, I think I've rambled on long enough uh, for the podcast audio only version of this episode. So uh, without further much ado, here is episode 125, Kiara, the Teenage Tailor of Invisibility. Hark the bardic paladin, who sings and plays again. He tells the tales of glory, and weaves a magic story. He'll join you at your table. And ask you to share a fable. Heroes of humble origin, villains who must be fought again. No matter their skill or prowess, the people in life are countless. So we pray you heed our request, enjoy this tale of sidekicks and sidequests. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of Sidekicks and Sidequests live at FateCon. Going to have to project my voice a little bit because, uh, you know, it's dinner time, and so people are, you know, getting used to the con and all that. So, you know, it's a live episode, so we're just we're taking with what we're given and we're running with it. So this, of course, is the best unofficial Dungeons and Dragons podcast, in my humbly biased opinion. So the way I typically do this show is that I'll invite guests on uh, to the podcast. We do a little personal interview section, and we get to making some NPCs. Um, you know, I right now, presently, got a small audience. So, I mean, I could turn the 
this is being, you know, special, something different for YouTube where I have the camera on right here, but you know, it's, I have two lovely audience members right now and I'm happy and thankful that they're here. And, uh, you know, what, what, what are your names? Uh, just so I can have it, uh, for posterity. MK temp. All right. MK and temp in the audience here and we're doing a live episode. So, uh, thank you so much for, uh, for being here. So, uh, this podcast started back in, uh, February of 2020, if you can believe it right before the pandemic hit. Um, so I've now been doing this for five seasons, over 120 episodes, and we just recently celebrated our uh, 11,000 total download uh, episode mark, uh, or 11,000 total downloads, I should say. So um, so yeah, I could just keep this very conversational, keep this going between the both of us, uh, you know, up here on the stage and in my audience below. and. Uh, you know, you know, I can, you know, interview you, the audience, or you can ask me questions or however you want to do this. And then uh, maybe we can get some dice and uh, come up with a random character or, you know, that because which is the typical spiel of a, of a given episode is uh, after a little personal interview section, uh, we'll roll some dice, make up an NPC, craft a story and uh, give them a side quest and then uh, see where we can put them in a world. So what do you think? You're good with just observing. Perfectly acceptable and all right. What about you, uh, Tim? He's also kind of observing in terms of what going to do. Yeah, yeah, no, to be fair. Yeah, we'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, do some behind the scenes editing work, see if this is going to be, uh, you know, something that goes up or maybe it's just a special gem of this, but. I wanted to lend my support to uh, Five Sided Fates since uh, I was I met them actually uh, last summer at the uh, the Dallas uh, Fan Expo, and they were running the D and D Tavern Experience, and uh, I thought they were great. They did such a good job, and uh, they talked about wanting to do their own local to the DFW area convention to like help spread <laughs> spread the word on D and D, get people involved, or you know. Uh, other critters and just, you know, their friends and such, uh, for the five sided fate. So, um, that's why I decided to, uh, not only run two games tomorrow, uh, but to take an opportunity to see about doing a live, uh, podcast episode. So wanted to take that gamble and a chance. And, uh, you know, uh, I have a background in music, uh, actually an undergrad in, in music. And so, you know, you just got to do, you got to, you got to soldier on, you know, the show must go on, whether you have an audience of two or 200, uh, you know, your audience is just as valuable. So, uh, so certainly thank you both for, uh, for being here. Um, so since I don't have any panelists at the moment, um, I guess I'm just going to treat this kind of like a very, uh, early on in the podcast, I used to do these, uh, informal in between week episodes, I might share some bit of world building or lore I had done in my world. Um, or I could just get straight to rolling some dice. Maybe we can create a character, uh, talk it out, figure it out, and then uh, kind of go from there, I guess. So, all right. No, no objections from the audience. If only I had some dice, um, I could use this brand new uh, dice tower that I just won earlier uh, this evening from doing D&D trivia uh, here in this room earlier. So thank you, Jerry of uh, Five Sided Fates for helping to uh, put this uh, or make this dice tower rather. So, all right, well, uh, then I guess I will go ahead and uh, we will move this into some uh, NPC creation. I have uh, my AirPods in, so the audience isn't uh, necessarily hearing it, but I had just done my musical cue for the NPC creation section of the show, which of course is brought to you by my awesome patrons uh, on Patreon. Uh, I've got a wonderful little tight-knit community uh, that for at the minimum level of $2 a month, they get a shout out. So this is going to be the point for me to shout out all my great uh, supporters. So to you, our Patreon queen, our queen of the Patreon, I should say, Goblin Katie, a.k.a. Uh, Katie Downey. 
as well as our other wealthy level patron supporters, Anson Jablinski, Nicholas Cartarelli, and mom and dad. Thank you so much. So cheers. We raise a glass to you. Uh, and if you want to learn more about the Patreon, just go into the show notes below, go to my podcast website, or just go directly to patreon.com forward slash sidekicks and sidequests to learn more about uh, our endeavors and help us to expand our operations in this demi plane and worlds beyond. So, uh, in this part of the podcast, as we said, we like to make up NPCs on uh, on this show. Um, and so, since I don't have physical dice here, uh, unless I had an audience member who was uh, gracious enough to let me borrow some dice, uh, I'm happy to use a dice roller on my phone. That's not a problem. Um, but I guess we're going to go ahead and go through the exercise, and we're going to create for this convention uh, a special brand new uh, NPC that you could hopefully take and use in your game tonight. Um, since uh, since my audience is here, why don't I just take a quick and formal poll? Is this uh, is there anything specific or unique that you would like uh, for this NPC to have or to do? Uh, any any guidelines or anything you want, or just roll the dice and see what we get? Yeah, I have to agree. I'm a fan of rolling the dice. Okay, so the audience wants me to go ahead and roll the dice. So that is what we will do. So. Our very first question here that we have is, what is going to be the name of our character that we are making today? We determine that with the roll of a d20. So I'm using my app here, and uh, let's say give that a roll so you you and the YouTube can see it. All right, so I got a 17, and as I check the list, this answer was provided by D&D Jordan Lee. Uh, Kiara, which is spelled K-I-A-R-A. So we're working with uh, Kiara as the name. Let me make sure I put a note there so I know uh, that that response has been used. Very good. Oh. The struggles of working with technology live at FateCon. All right. So uh, then let's see the next thing we get to roll for. An ancestry of the character, the, the background, the species, if you will. So this will be a 2D10 or a D100 roll. Um, so now I click that and I got a 70 on the first roll. So let's see what a 70 would pull up on my random table. Interesting. Okay, so we got a Medusa is what we got. So we so far we're working with Kiara, who's a Medusa. All right. And then let's see. The next question we have to ask ourselves is... What is the job or role in society? So if we're going to find Kiara in the world, what's she going to be doing? Um, and the way we determine this is with the role of a just a regular D10. And so pull up the dice app and give that a roll. Whoop. Oh, a 10. Right on. All right. This answer provided by my mom, Patreon supporter, uh, Pamela Krenwogi. Mom, I love you. Uh, a tailor. Of invisibility. So just normally when I have a guest, I can banter back and forth and kind of like get ideas. But what we're working with so far, audience, Kiara the Medusa, who's a tailor of invisibility, what does what does that mean? What do you think it means? So so Kiara is just making invisibility cloaks all the time. There's no wrong answers, literally anything you could think of. Okay, a spellcaster who's using her abilities to just make all the, the clothes invisible or the ability to become invisible. Okay, I like that. All right, we can work with that. And then the next question we get to roll for is, what is the age range of our character? I like to do it in age ranges, not necessarily a specific number. So I'm going to now roll a D8 and see what we get, which is a 2, which in that case would make her, Kiara a teenager. So we have a teenage Medusa named Kiara that's a tailor of invisibility. And so with all of these details in mind, we now move to the next question, which is describe the physical appearance of Kiara. So there's a, obviously you could go standard Medusa, uh, but a teenage variant. But I don't know. Is there an audience? Is there anything that comes to your mind when you're trying to picture Kiara in your mind with these details that we've learned so far? Oh, no, I don't think 
Oh, a blue skinned Medusa. Okay, I like that. That's, that's a little different. Okay. And uh, all right. So yeah, it's obviously young, so not going to be like a fully grown uh, Medusa. Um, now, interesting question. I know there's a podcast that I like to listen to called Kill Every Monster, in which they kind of deconstruct and go through each of the monsters in the monster manual. And so there was a really good episode they did on Medusas. And I know there was a debate of like, oh, can a Medusa like exist in, soci exist in society? But like if they purposely always wear blindfolds, so then that way their petrification abilities never activate. I know uh, a previous guest of the show, the Royal Tut, rolled randomly for a Medusa. Uh, but he had an interesting idea that because the Medusa had never fallen in love and had her heart broken, she was never able to actually petrify anyone. But once that happened, once her heart got broken, then she would be like a full on monster manual Medusa, like able to petrify. So um, do you, th do you think uh, that uh, Kiara is like full fledged Medusa? Like you look at her and you turn to stone or is she different where she like, she wears a blindfold or she has some sort of mutation or something like that, that prevents her from, uh, from being able to petrify others. You don't think she could petrify? Is there a reason why? Okay, so she's still young, so she hasn't fully grown into her powers. So uh, maybe maybe something like, uh, it'd be kind of funny if it was like, oh, every time you look at her, there's like a, maybe like a, a paralyzing effect or like you're just stunned for a second because you're like, oh, you're so beautiful, or, like, there's just something arresting about you, and, like, that's, like, the beginnings of what the petrification would be, but, like, without being petrified, that could be uh, a possibility, maybe. Um, okay, all right, so I could dig that. So, teenager, blue-skinned, uh, any particular snakes in the hair? Just regular old, like, adders and asps and stuff like that? Okay. Well, yeah, like, um, well, we're not imagining something like cobras on her head or something like that. Just like regular, like you'd see the Greek myth and you'd see like the snakes and then that would be the snakes in her hair. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Here's a fun one. I always like to help narrow down NPCs by trying to, de to, to describe them with three adjectives. So we have Kiara, the tailor of invisibility, who's a teenager. So what three adjectives are best going to describe her? And I am, I am going to pull the audience just to see if they can give me like a good descriptive adjective. Valley girl. Okay, so bubbly. Okay, I like that. A valley girl bubbly sort of personality. Okay. Nothing comes to mind? Okay. I don't know. Maybe it helps to think of like so a tailor of invisibility. So she has some spell casting to be able to like make these kinds of clothes with the ability to turn invisible. Is there, is there a reason why she became a tailor? Is it simply that she was like an apprentice who now is so proficient that she's her own tailor or she's still an apprentice or is there something to that effect that would help inform kind of her character? Oh, okay. So grandma and grandma's also Medusa. Could be. Okay. Mm, interesting. Okay. So gra grandmother is getting older. And so she, Kiara is stepping up to learn. And so that's how she got into the trade of making these clothes. Okay. So she's bubbly. Um, so it sounds like maybe she's like, she's, she's a uh, duty bound. Maybe she has that sense of loyalty with the family of like, okay, well, grandma's getting old. So I need to step up because if I don't do it, then no one else is going to do it kind of a thing. Okay. And then let's see, is there a third one? So is, you know, sometimes it could be like a zag, like, you know, there's some other adjective that describes her, but it's like totally different or you wouldn't necessarily expect it perhaps. Bubbly, steadfast, and, uh, well, let's see, I don't know. Taylors are usually pretty, like, meticulous. They're hardworking. 
uh, is she just kind of like very like dedicated and focused on doing a good job and making sure that the enchantments take place and hold? Oh, okay. So she, okay. So she's still learning. So she's maybe like ambitious, like maybe over ambitious. Okay. All right. So we've got someone who is bubbly. Uh, they're, they're dedicated and loyal, but they're kind of like, you know, over ambitious at times. They take on uh, greater scopes than they, they can handle. Okay. All right. We can work with that. Um, okay. Now, now, and then usually when I have guests, I'm like, and this is the part where we get to go back to some dice rolling. Uh, so now we get to determine uh, what is a valuable item, piece of lore, a uh, secret or an ideal or concept that the character would ascribe to. So the, we get to roll for the category first, which is going to be a D4. And as I pull it up here and do boop, okay, I got a two, which would mean that this is going to be a piece of lore. So something that Kiara would know about the world. And now we're going to roll a D6. Boop. Oh, and got another two. Well, there we go. So this answer was provided by, ah, Legal Kimchi, who you may know on YouTube, does some fantastic uh, video essays on different topics on the hobby uh, and, and other such subjects related to Dungeons and Dragons. The answer that he provided was that Kiara knows the process to become a god, but it comes with a terrible cost. Audience, do we have any thoughts on why that could be that she would know this information? Oh, okay. Grandma is busy raising her because mom knew the information. So does that mean that uh, Kiara's mom is, in fact, like a goddess of the world? Oh, so she lost her mom. Like, you know, all the memory of like, well, I don't know. Is it something extreme like her memory of her mother's are gone now because her mom ascended to God? That'd be too mean. Okay, so we can't do that. So maybe the cost of like, well, now she's gone. She's in the she's in the realm of the gods now and she can't like be with me and her family. There's a high cost. Okay, yeah, and she's forbidden from returning. Oh, destroy the world. Okay, so that's the terrible cost. So, like, now that... Okay, so she's seen her mom go through this whole process, and that's the piece of lore. So she, so this unassuming, up-and-coming tailor knows what it takes to become a god, but just the terrible burden that comes along with, with it. Okay. All right, yeah, well... See, these, these are the kinds of, uh, you know, wild throws you can get on this show when you're randomly generating a character because you're like, oh, I think I have this cookie cutter idea. And suddenly it's like, oh, but this tailor knows how to become a god. So if you put this character in your game, then suddenly it's like, oh, well, now we need to be paying attention to every little person we meet because what other kinds of secrets can they know? Um, okay. And since we have been going the path of random, we are going to also go ahead and randomly generate a side quest because every one of our NPCs needs to have a side quest that they have to ask the player characters, the heroes, to go and do. So this final dice roll, we get to use a d12, which as I show to the camera here, boop, a one. Well, let's see what that gets us. Um, well, this one is a, a suggestion from previous guest Brady Effler. Well, I don't know. Maybe it will actually fit because we've already established that Kiara has a grandmother. The side quest says, carry my grandmother to the market. She's in a backpack. Do you think that's a okay side quest for Kiara to be able to ask the heroes to help her with? Cloaks at home, they have to carry Grandma can't make it. Kiara has to carry it. Okay. Um, okay, that could be one possibility. If we want, sometimes I will allow sometimes for multiple roles, just if something doesn't maybe necessarily drive. Let's just try it and see. So I'm going to try another D12 roll and get a four. Okay, so what does this one say? Okay, this one's from uh, my previous guest, Nolan Page. 
deliver a breeding pair of a rare species of animal to a reserve to help them repopulate their numbers. Yeah, between that one and the first one, I feel like the first one may be the better bet. So, okay. So we're thinking that, okay, carry the grandma. So the grandmother has to get to the market somehow. Is the grandmother invalid? And then that's why, you know, like she has like some sort of backpack device that maybe the biggest, beefiest character of the party has to like put on their back. And then it becomes like a, a very pleasant sort of escort mission where you're slowly walking through the town and it's like, oh, I've got grandmother on my back and we have to just get to the market and, you know, our tailor shop is on the way edge of the town. And so now we're having to do like an urban encounter or an urban interlude where we're navigating our way through the city. Um, maybe they're accosted by bandits or maybe Medusas aren't welcome in this town. And so they're having to put up with the prejudice of the other villagers or I don't know. What do you think? Anything there? Or is that too wildly far fetched? Okay, so so grandma's a little grandma's a little city and is like silly and is like, oh, you're a big strong boy, and it's like, okay, I'm just trying to carry you in a backpack. I don't I don't need grandma flirting with me right now. Uh, okay, that could be fun. Okay, so she, so grandma's making comments, pointing out things in the town, um, and then okay, so we're so the simple enough side quest. We just got to get grandma out of the market. She's in this backpack contraption because. You know, for for reasons, you know, maybe the wheelchairs in the shop and, you know, or, or, you know, the or whatever it could be, for whatever reason, we leave it open to the DMs to be able to invent. We don't necessarily have to spell everything out, but I believe in the creativity of the community. And maybe if I don't have a good idea, someone else will to be able to offer a better explanation for their game. So, OK, so we're carrying grandma. Oh, okay. Vendors, perhaps. Okay. Okay. Interesting. I like the idea of like the idea of like a tour bus. Cause I know I've studied abroad overseas. Uh, I did my study abroad trip back in 2008 and I'm pretty sure we went on like a bus tour of Edinburgh, Scotland. And so, yeah, exactly like that idea of like, you're driving around the city and the, and the, the, the guide is like pointing things out and uh, and then when I went to Chicago for a visit, we did go on an architectural riverboat tour. And that's the same thing. We're cr cruising up and down the river and he's on the microphone and pointing out the different things we can see while we're in the river. I was, you know, you, you said the idea about grandma with, uh, you know, shoulder, shoulder massaging the muscles. And then I remembered, oh, Emperor's New Groove when uh, Yzma is on the back of Kronk. Kronk has the huge backpack and Yzma's in the top of it. So maybe that's what it is. It's not an invalid thing. It's like she wants to ride in style and like a livery, but it's a livery that you have to put on your back. And so she's insistent that the player characters uh, parade her through town in order to get to the market. Okay. All right. So I can work with that. Um, but now we have to consider what is going to be the reward. So the players undergo this mission of parading through the town, getting grandma in the backpack and getting her to the market, what's going to be the reward for the players? Is it going to be something like, oh, I have a spare garments that I'm meaning to sell uh, and I'm going to offer it to you, uh, the, play the heroes, the player characters, so then that way um, they could get their hands on like a cloak of invisibility or a tunic of invisibility or leather pants of invisibility or something like that, you think? a high level sort of invisibility cloak. Now, is it regular invisibility or is it going to be like greater invisibility? Because greater invisibility is the one that lets you to be able to like attack and do stuff, but you still remain invisible. Whereas regular invisibility, as soon as you attack or do some sort of action, you become immediately, uh, immediate, 
immediately visible to the public. So do you think it's like the lower level version of invisibility or the higher level version? You think the lower one? That's a good question. Uh, we're trying to figure out the reward. So, I mean, if you if we successfully help Kiara with carrying grandma in this livery through town to get to the market, um, the backpack livery. Okay, the lower end one. Okay, so. Right, right, yeah. Because she's, yeah, she's learning from, yeah, because she's learning from grandma. Gr do you, grandma could probably make like a greater invisibility one, but it probably takes like way longer to get it because the enchantment is, takes longer and stuff like that, you think? Okay, yeah, sure. All right, fair enough. You know, you know, not so hard that players couldn't get it, but, you know, it would it would take some time and resources to actually get something that would hopefully not be too game breaking. Um, but, you know, still obey the, the context of the spells and stuff like that. So, okay. So Kiar rewards the players with a garment, like a cloak or a jacket or, or something. And it allows you to cast invisibility on yourself just once a day. And then once it's used up, you got to wait the next day to be able to cast it again. Or is it like a number of charges and then, you know, because that that one's kind of fun. Like if it lets you do so many number of charges, but then you have to wait till the next dawn for it to recharge. And yeah, so let's say it's okay. And you know, it's okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it's so, okay. So like six charges. So six times a day with this cloak or jacket or whatever nice piece of tailoring. Why is it oh, a D six. Okay, okay. All right, fair enough. So we'll leave it like a D6. So this garment that you're awarded by Kiara gives you a D6 worth of times to be able to cast invisibility to the wearer specifically. And then once they're used up, you got to wait till the next dawn until they come back. Okay, that's, that's balance. I like it. So we're, we're good with that. But now we have to consider the opposite. So What's going to be the consequence of failure or refusing the call to the adventure? So Kiara, they, the players stumble upon Kiara. Kiara asks them, hey, can you carry my grandmother to the market? She has this whole thing. She likes to parade around in style and livery. And, you know, I'm not quite, I'm a teenager. I'm not quite strong enough to lift my grandmother up. But you, you barbarian, you look like you're strong enough. But they say no. Or you know, Lord forbid something tragic happens through town. There's a, a mule cart pile up and uh, the players trip and fall and grandma falls out of the livery or something like that. What's going to be the consequence of failure? How is Kiara going to react to that? Is she going to be like, I would imagine pretty upset, like, oh my gosh, you guys dropped my grandmother. What's wrong with you? Oh, okay. So now she becomes a full-fledged Medusa and now the party has to deal with a Medusa who's not intentionally like stereotypically like, oh, I'm an evil monster and I'm going to get you. It's just like suddenly like everyone starts seeing her. Everyone starts going petrified. She freaks out because she doesn't know what's going on. And now it's a mad chase through the city because you're trying to get a hold of her to stop her from turning everyone into stone because she's panicking. Like, I don't know why everyone's turning. So it's like an X-Men sort of situation of like, Oh, my X-Men powers are manifesting and I can't control them. Okay. I like that. So if grandma gets dropped, if any harm comes to grandma from the, if through the course of this Medusa X-Men powers activate. Okay. Is she, does she handle it differently? If you just refuse like, Hey, can you carry my grandma in this backpack thing? And they say, no, does she react differently? Right, that doesn't seem like it's triggering enough. Okay, and then of course, obviously, they miss out on the free piece of clothing. They have to pay full price now. No discounts. Uh, it's going to be very, you're going to have to roll a disadvantage on persuasion checks to get her to even consider giving you a discount kind of a thing. Yeah, but if you help grandma out, maybe I'm willing to give you a discount or something like that. Okay. All right. Um, I also have a series of optional questions that kind of help to round out the character a little more fully. 
are you interested in exploring any of those? Or do you feel like Kiara is pretty well figured out as far as Medusa goes? Yeah, I mean, I can run through them real quick. So, yeah, sure. Okay. So our questions that we have, what are the goals and motivations of Kiara? How do these affect her general personality? Um, how does she interact with people? Is she pretty consistent across the board or is she pretty nuanced depending on who she's talking to? Um, does she have a particular uh, accent or language that she uses? Are there any idiosyncrasies in how she speaks? Uh, what impact has she made on the world? How has she sh shaped the local area? And then finally, does she have any current problems that prevent her from being a bigger player on the stage? So that's the pool of optional questions that sometimes guests of the podcast, I'm, I'm gesturing here, you in the, in the audio version won't see me gesturing to a pair of empty seats, but you in the YouTube video will see I'm gesturing to a pair of empty seats. Um, but yeah, sometimes guests on the show uh, will explore the optional questions because they really get invested in this character that we've made and they kind of want to, they want to dig deeper and figure something out. So do any of those questions speak to you? Like I know earlier, uh, you you mentioned like the the valley girl bubbly aspect. So does she talk like a valley girl? Okay, so Kiara is totally a valley girl in her impersonate in her speaking. Okay, does that translate as well for her general demeanor and personality? Or she speaks like a valley girl, but she's like you know, like I'm all serious about being a tailor. Okay, so she's loyal and, uh, you know, she's over ambitious. And so that's where she like, oh, I pricked my finger again from doing it. But she's still totally 100% like a 1980s Valley girl kind of a thing. Yeah, she's still young. Mm, okay. All right. Okay. So, all right. We got the, we got the accent and the, the voice down. Um, okay. Uh, any of the other ones speaking to you or should we go ahead and move into the next section, the random encounter section? Okay. All right. Well, without further ado, we'll head into the next section, the random encounter. All right, so this is normally the part of the show uh, where I do a role play vignette, a little scene, a little bit of uh, improvisational DVD on the D and D DVDs. Goodness, I don't have DVDs. Uh, improvisational D and D on the spot. Uh, so usually it's kind of easier to do when you have uh, a guest with you to kind of riff off of. Um, it is entirely possible to just do a one man show kind of a thing. Um, but yeah, uh, well, I'm, far be it for me to force an audience member to come up here and sit next to me and like role play a scene out. I'm again, I'm happy to do it all myself, but I'm kind of curious, what scene are you interested in seeing Kiara presented in? Is this going to be like Kiara speaking with the grandmother? Is it Kiara speaking with uh, a party of adventurers asking them to take on the side quest mission? Um, I don't know. What kind of scene are you interested in seeing Kiara kind of come to life? Mm -hmm. hey, let's... Let's okay all right and so the uh the the podcast does have okay no sorry uh you're right. Okay, so we're just doing Grandma and Kiara. I was going to say, I could go ahead and roll out the whole list of podcast adventure characters because then that would give me an idea of like possibly who she could meet. And then we like leave the question open of, oh, does this person take the side quest or not? But okay, so it'll be me, a one man show, basically doing a valley girl teen and then an elderly grandmother figure and they're talking back and forth. Okay. All right, so we're going to set the scene then. So we are at. 
the tailor shop, uh, you know, this very exclusive one and this, uh, you know, because they're Medusa's, maybe they weren't quite able to get that downtown real estate next to the market that they wanted, that grandma wanted all those years ago. And ever since her daughter had the strange idea of going off to find the, the, the path to becoming a deity figure. And there is a nice little altar set up in their tailor shop to their, to her daughter and to Kiara's mom, this deity figure, uh, it brings them both joy and sadness to be able to see this and this slowly burgeoning uh, goddess figure who serves uh, uh, tailors and medusas and other domain aspects yet uh, yet unknown that are you know still being discovered as this new deity is emerging. Um, but Grandma's feeling a- antsy and she's feeling uh, she's feeling you know kind of sassy today, and so she's like Kiara, Kiara. I want to go to the market today. And she's like, oh my gosh, grandma, what do you mean? We just went to the market yesterday. I need to go and get some fresh produce. And she's like, "Ah, okay, do I need to get like my my outfit or you want to wear this one or that one? And she's like, no, 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 no. No, today I'm feeling quite blessed and proud. Your mother, she sees us and she blesses us. Mm, Yes, but... I'm feeling rather regal, and I want to be carried. Grandma, you know I can't pick you up. Hmm, well, that's not my problem. It's yours, isn't it? And she's like, all right, you're right. Yes, okay, I guess it is my problem to figure out. And so she sees the the, the backpack livery that she just is in love with. She bought it, like, years ago. Uh, Grandpa used to carry her around in it because, you know, Grandpa was a big, strong lad uh and he since passed on so no one else has really been able to take grandma in the livery and so she's like measuring you know she pulls out her tailor's measuring tape and she's getting dimensions and uh so then she begins to uh, she's like okay grandma just wait here you know here, here's your tea sit down relax take a load off and don't worry i promise we'll get to the market don't you worry and so she goes outside and uh, I imagine it's a very funny montage scene as she's like calling out to people. Some people give her a wide berth because, you know, she's still a Medusa. People, unfortunately, still have those prejudices and stigmas. And they're like, oh, oh, OK. I'm, you know, so some people like cool down a little bit because they realize they're not being turned to stone. Um, but she's going around. It's, she's not helping her case because she's going around with a measuring tape and she's measuring these gentlemen's backs. She's trying to figure out like who's big enough to be able to lift her grandma up. And uh, and then as some sort of unseen uh, adventure characters approach with like paladins and fighters and barbarians in tow, it's just a rowdy, rowdy, burly party of men start to come down the road and her eyes open wide and she gets so excited and giddy as they start to approach and she starts to wave and hail them down. And, uh, and we will see if uh, Kiara is able to successfully convince them to help carry grandma to the market and see. So, you know, a little quick, short and easy scene, but uh, thank you. Thank you. The golf claps. I appreciate it. You seriously, you two have been great. I appreciate the collaborative you know, this podcast is a very collaborative sort of a thing. It's easy enough to talk into a microphone. Lots of podcasts out there are just someone talking into a microphone, but uh, kind of the ethos and the idea of this podcast is that it's, you know, D&D is a very communal hobby and it works best when we're storytelling and working with others. And so it just means a lot that, uh, you know, the two of you came here and I appreciate that. And I don't mind getting emotional about that a little bit. So thank you. So what did you think of uh, getting to be at Psychics and PsyQuest Live and to get to help be here and uh, be a part of the process of making Kiara? Smiles, smiles, polite, polite smiles and golf claps. Okay. We met at my party. Exactly. Yeah, that's and I think that's the real hidden gem of this podcast is that, you know, because every guest that comes on, which I haven't I haven't forgot, we're going to we're going to get your inputs once this stops rolling and you're going to get to add in your own responses 
uh, to my table. So then that way, when you're listening to future episodes of Sidekicks and SideQuests and someone rolls on the tables and you hear your name, you'll know that it's you who's contributed to the next great NPC that someone else will be able to get to carry into their games. So, um, so yeah, I think that's the hidden gem is that truly they can be, you know, actualized and based on real people. So like sometimes what seems like silly, odd combinations of things, when you really are forced to be creative, you can make like real people like, Oh, a Medusa who's a tailor. Oh, but she has a grandma and a mom who ascended to godhood and she's trying to live up to grandma's expectations, but she's still a teenager and she's still trying to find herself in the world. And how many, well, I don't know how many people's moms have ever ascended to godhood, but plenty of other young teen girls that, you know, live with grandma and they're trying to bond with grandma and make grandma proud, but they're also still trying to find themselves. So we are able to find these very human, relatable, empathetic stories in seemingly uh, goofy NPCs and side quests that are made on this podcast. So that's what I hope that I'm uh, delivering and, and leaving for the community to be able to have. So as we're here, I guess, in the final uh, closing moments of the podcast, um, I always like to, well, I always like to leave it to the, the guests, the, you know, the, you know, the, the platform, the stage, the mic microphone, soapbox and whatnot, um, to be able to plug whatever they got. So, you know, is there any, any cause or passion that you are invested in that you think, you know, Maybe it's just the two of you here in the audience, but I hope that this podcast will, this episode will go far and wide. And so is there a particular charity or cause or passion or something that you think that our audience needs to know about that you can share here in the final moments? Grandmother, granddaughter. Okay. Okay, I like that. Yeah. So, uh, so our, our 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 shout out here for Alzheimer's uh, awareness and support. So, anything that we can do uh, to help raise uh, awareness and charitable uh, funds towards research and helping and caregiving of those. Uh, who are suffering from Alzheimer's and for support of, of grandparents everywhere. I know, um, yeah, I've, I've lost all my grandparents now. My, my grandmother uh, just passed away this past December. Um, so, yeah, I, I totally believe and agree in, uh, you know, reaching out to your grandparents. I know not everyone um, necessarily gets the best family situation, but if you're able to, I would encourage you to, you know, reach out to your grandparents, let them know you love them. And uh, if you don't have a grandparents anymore, then certainly lean on your elderly next door neighbors or go visit a nursing home. And they, I'm sure they would love to have you there. You should run games of Dungeons and Dragons for your local nursing home. I think you should give grandpa and grandma an adventure. I think they would love you. You know, lots of people go to nursing homes and they play pianos or they do comedy shows or whatever. I think I, I'm going to up you. I'm going to up the challenge here on the internet now for my audience. I want you to go run D and D for grandma and grandpa, whether they're at your dining room table or your kitchen table or the nursing home, you should do that. Is there any cause or passion or anything that you want to share? No. Okay. Well, we are here. We're live at uh, FateCon. And so I thank my audience for being gracious with me and, and indulging me and getting to journey with me as we got to make Kiara today. Uh, so I can't wait to be back here tomorrow, 9 a.m. and 3 o'clock p.m. I'm running games. So I've got some prep work to do tonight uh, to get ready for those. So uh, without much further ado, take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time on Sidekicks and SideQuests. Thank you for listening to this episode of Sidekicks and SideQuests. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast through Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Amazon Music, and Overcast. Or feel free to save the RSS feed to use the app of your choice. If you don't like using podcast apps and services, I'm proud to announce that I'm in the process of uploading the podcast to our very own dedicated YouTube channel, which you can find by searching for 
sidekicks, and side quests. All future episodes should automatically publish to our YouTube channel. Visit our website, sidekicksandsidequests.com, for links, write-ups of the NPCs, and to learn more about the show and the guests who have been on it. To stay up to date and interact via social media, you can follow the podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and the corresponding threads, Twitter, now rebranded X, and Reddit by searching for Side KQ Podcast. You can now also find a very tiny community on Discord as well. I would love to talk D&D and showcase your fan art, stories of how you used our NPCs, discussions, and commentary. If you'd like to hail the bard, simply send me an email at sidekicksandsidequests at gmail.com. To help this show be the resource it's meant to be, I ask that you please leave a review on iTunes, five stars if you please, to help spread the word and share our podcast with your friends and family. Whether you're a veteran player or an aspiring dungeon master, there's something here for everyone, and I want to hear about it. As mentioned in the NPC creation section of the show, I do in fact have a Patreon for the podcast. If you love this podcast and you want to help support us and take our show to the next level, I would appreciate it if you would go to patreon.com forward slash sidekicks and sidequests. No matter your lifestyle expenses, we have wonderful rewards at every level of Patreon membership tier. Modest, comfortable, wealthy, and aristocratic accommodations await, and we welcome all patrons to the Levitating Platter. Seriously, your financial support allows for this passion project to continue to invest in itself through the tools that will take our production to the next level, as well as provide more content for our patrons and the community at large. Please consider supporting me on Patreon if you can. Sidekicks and side quests is unofficial fan content permitted under the fan content policy, meaning I'm not approved or endorsed by wizards. Portions of the materials used are property of Wizards of the Coast. Copyright Wizards of the Coast LLC. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you at the pub next time. Bar to rock on one, two, one, two, three, four. Cycle.